A Stuart Beam Engine Refurbishment Part 2, fitting cylinder drain cocks, piston ring and gasket. The main reason for dismantling this engine was to do this job. And here I'm doing it, fitting the drain cocks. This clip shows me drilling the holes. I've already used a centre drill to get the holes in the correct position. And now I'm drilling all the way through with a 16th of an inch diameter drill. A word of caution when doing a job like this. Always use a very small diameter drill bit when drilling through into the cylinder. The diameter of the hole into the cylinder needs to be very small. If it was a larger hole, you may catch the piston ring as the piston goes up and down in the cylinder and this will in turn damage the piston ring. I'm going to fit a brand new pair of drain cocks to this cylinder. I do have some used drain cocks in a box, but as we all know, the worst possible thing on a steam engine is a dribbling drain cock. A dribbling drain cock dribbling all over the place just doesn't look good and it makes a mess of the bed plate too. The drain cocks I'm going to use have a 532nd by 40 threads per inch thread on them. So once I've drilled all the way through with a 1 16th of an inch diameter drill, brush away the swarf, it's time to enlarge the top part of these holes with a tapping size drill for 532nd by 40 threads per inch, being very careful not to go all the way through into the cylinder. And also, I'm being very careful generally. I don't want any drills breaking off in this casting because I would have to make a new cylinder. Drilling cast iron is quite straightforward. It doesn't tend to grab, but it can do now and again. So if you're doing a job like this, just take your time. Don't force the drill through the hole, let it cut. A quick word about the position of the hole for the drain cock. I'm following the pattern of the casting. And in reality, I do think that these holes are possibly a little bit too high. This is relatively unimportant. Even though the drain cocks will be fully functional, I won't be using them. Mainly because if you open the drain cocks, you get oily water all over your engine. So what's the point of fitting them? Well, the cylinder looked really naked without them. It looked completely wrong. The shape of the casting is designed to take a couple of drain cocks. In this clip, I'm using a 532nd by 40 threads per inch tap. I've made sure that I've inserted the tap squarely into the hole and I'm using a taper tap first. After every tapping operation, I bang the cylinder gently against the bench to clear all the swath from the hole before using the next tap. I really don't want to risk snapping off a tap in the holes at this stage, so I use a taper tap first, followed by a second tap, followed by a plug. If you're not familiar with this, there are three types of tap. A taper tap, as it suggests, has a tapered end. A second tap also has a tapered end, but slightly less so, and a plug tap does not have a tapered end and will cut the thread all the way down to the bottom of the hole. Once the holes are tapped, and I bang the cylinder on the bench to get rid of every trace of swarf in the holes, I'm trying a test fit of the drain cocks. And you will notice that the drain cocks do not go all the way into the hole, which is strange because the thread is long enough. So why can't I screw these drain cocks tightly into the cylinder? The answer is quite simple. The thread on the drain cocks does not go fully to the end of the shaft. Whenever you thread anything up to a shoulder, the die can't cut the last part of the thread where it meets the shoulder. And that's because the front part of the die is slightly tapered to accept the shaft that you're threading. And here's a top tip. Whenever you thread anything up to a shoulder, thread it normally using a die and then reverse the die, turn the die round in the die holder, and that way you can cut the thread a little bit closer to the shoulder. If you have a look at a screw cutting die, you will see that on the front there's a countersink, and on the rear there isn't. What I've also done, and I've just used a twist drill, not under power, just in my fingers, I've countersunk the hole in the cylinder, and now the drain cock screws all the way in with no real gap to speak of. First of all, as you see here, I'm cutting the threads in Loctite 542, followed by screwing the drain cocks into the cylinder. I was lucky in this instance because I didn't need to use any shim washers to make the drain cocks sit in the correct position. But that is not always the case. So now the drain cocks are fitted and the cylinder's cleaned out, all the swarfs been removed, it's time to fit the piston ring. In this clip, with the help of plenty of oil, I'm fitting a new silicone o-ring piston ring because it would be foolish to put the old one back in as that's part one. Whether the piston rings are cast iron, graphited yarn or silicone, I would always use plenty of steam oil. Then I very carefully insert the piston into the cylinder, making sure that I don't trap the o-ring and test it for movement. Yes, it moves fine, it feels very good indeed.
No sooner did I fit the piston into the cylinder, I had to remove it in order to make a gasket, and for that, as always, I'm using my ink pad method. I press the cylinder onto an ink pad and transfer the image onto a piece of gasket material. This is a very simple job, very quick to do, and it makes good gaskets, and the gaskets are accurate. Here I can clearly see the position for all the holes for the bolts. So the first job is to use my old hole punch to punch out all the holes. I punch out the first three because I can clearly get at those, but then I have to cut out the gasket to get at the fourth one. I cut out a square shape, I didn't cut out the proper shape of the gasket because the ink's still wet, and I need the gasket material to remain strong enough to allow me to cut out the centre like this. This gasket material is quite tenacious stuff. The scalpel is very sharp, yet it takes a couple of attempts to get the hole out of the middle. What I generally do is use my little Minicraft drill with a drum sander fitted to tidy up the inside surface of these gaskets because the knife cuts it okay, but it can be a little bit raggy. And then I use the rustiest pair of scissors in the world, which are still good. These are great scissors. And they seem to be a lot stronger than the scissors that you buy these days. All that remains to be done is to fit the cylinder cover. This is a very well engineered cylinder because the cylinder cover fits in every position. Just out of interest I did try it and yes it does. If you're doing a job like this, remember this is not the cylinder head of a car and you do not need to torque up these bolts. If you do that, you will probably shear them off and then it's back to the drawing board. This clip shows me trimming off the excess gasket material that I don't need. If any gasket material sticks out from around the edge of the cylinder, it's not a problem. There's a couple of ways of getting rid of this. If it's a large piece, use a knife. If it's just small bits, use some Scotch-Brite. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.